So we're looking for a way for this integral to always be zero. And we want it to be zero for any value of eta or any function eta. So since eta is a small deviation from this ideal path, say our ideal path looks something like this. Our slightly different path can, can take a lot of forms, right? It could be just very close along the way, all the way across, or it could be, or it could wiggle up and down above it, or it could, you know, it could do all these different things. There are lots of different paths that meet our requirement for being a small deviation from the ideal path. So we want for any eta for this whole thing to be zero. So one way we could ensure that this is zero, regardless of the form that eta takes, we could try to rewrite it in a way that has, it's an integral over time again of something, something times eta integrated over time equals zero. And if we could say that this thing in here equals zero, then for anything that eta is, and I've written an n again, but an eta, for anything that eta is, the integral will have to be zero because zero times eta is always zero. And if this is always zero, the integral will always be zero. So let's try to find a way to shift this a little bit so that it's all something multiplied by eta. Now this part, it's already done for us, right? It's already the potential energy or the derivative of the potential energy, right? U prime evaluated along the, the ideal path. This is already multiplied by eta, but this, this is the derivative of eta. This derivative isn't quite the same as multiplying by eta. It's related, it's close, but it's not quite the same. So we need to fiddle with this a little bit to make it look something like, like this down here, something multiplied by eta. Now to do that, we'll actually relate it to the chain rule. So we're going to call this pink thing here, I'm just going to write it as f, f. And then this is the derivative, the derivative of eta. So d eta dt. d a to d t. So if we add this to eta times d f d t, d f d t, that should be equal to the derivative of the product of eta and f, of eta and f. Right? This, this is the chain rule. Or not the chain rule, the product rule. I'm not sure, I may have said chain rule earlier, but I meant product rule. So if we take the derivative of the product, that's the same as one of the functions times the derivative of the other, and then the other function times the derivative of the first function. So this is, this is what we're looking at. And, and this, right, we want the derivative of eta times another function. So we'll rearrange and solve for this. We can say that f times the derivative of eta with respect to t, d eta dt equals the derivative of eta and f, the product of eta and f, minus minus this term right here, right? The eta times the FDT. The FDT, right? So we've, we've solved for this. And now since we're integrating over this thing, we'll integrate, we'll integrate all of this. So we'll really find something that we can, we can plug in instead of this. We'll integrate this whole thing. We'll say that the integral from t1 to t2 of d a to d t times f times f. So now this looks just like in our equation above equals the integral of the derivative of eta times f. So that just turns out to be eta times f, eta times f evaluated at these two times between t1 
and t2, right? So we're evaluating it there. And then we're subtracting this integral. This is, this is dt over time. We're subtracting the integral from, between t1 and t2 of, of eta times df dt. Eta times df dt. And then my color changes are more or less arbitrary at this, at this point. But in any case, we've taken something with a derivative in it, a derivative of eta, and now we only have etas, right? There are no derivatives of eta over here. And so we can make it, we can shift this by substituting in. We can make this whole thing look like just something multiplied by eta. And as a bonus, this term right here is actually zero, right? So eta times f evaluated at t1 and t2. So we know that eta is actually zero at t1 and t2. I'll erase this and draw it again just to be more clear. If this is our true path, oops. If this is our true path between, between these two endpoints, and this is our other path, our, our slightly differing path, eta is the difference here between the two paths at each point, right? It's a function of t, just like the two paths are. And at the end point and the beginning point, eta, the difference between the two paths, is zero. So if we evaluate this at these two endpoints, right, it's actually zero. So we can totally cross this out. This is, this is zero. So we can replace this, this integral of f times dn dt over t with the integral of eta times the derivative of f with respect to t. So let's, re, let's rewrite this whole, this, whoops, not this integral, but this integral up here. Let's rewrite this integral. So we'll say this integral ds, which equals zero, is equal, or we want to equal zero, is equal to the integral from t1, whoops, t1 to t2 of this first thing here. Actually, I'll I'll forget about the etas and and write them at the end. I'll multiply together. So, df dt. So, this m dx dt, the time derivative of that, which is just m times the second derivative m times the second derivative with respect to t of x bar. So that's the first, that's df dt, right? And this is all in a big box that's going to be multiplied by eta, right? So I'm forgetting about this eta for now. Multiplied by or added to the second piece here, this, this derivative of the potential energy, oops, and I've shown you the edge of the screen, this derivative of the potential energy function multiplied by eta. So plus, actually this is, this is negative, this first term here, I've forgotten my negative sign. Actually, let me check. This should actually be minus as well, right? Because we're, we're, we're doing the difference between, we're doing the difference between the kinetic and potential energies here. So this should be a minus sign. So I sh it's probably wrong in the previous video. I should check that. But there's, this is a minus sign, and this is a minus sign. So this is a minus sign as well. This is a minus sign. So I'm losing track of my minus signs, it seems. Minus the derivative with respect to x, u prime of evaluated at evaluated along the true path all of this stuff multiplied by eta all of this integrated over t so now we have it in this form that we can say if this stuff in here equals 0 if this is 0 this whole integral will be 0 right
and it'll all be zero no matter what eta is. So that has to be zero. So I'll rewrite it. The negative of the derivative of the potential energy equals equals maybe I don't need the green anymore equals the mass times the second derivative of the position. So now we have this differential equation in time and space that describes the ideal path of the particle. And you might recognize this, the negative of the derivative of the potential energy. Another way of saying that is the force, the force, right? And I haven't made any videos about force being the derivative of the potential energy. But if you're watching videos on least action, you may have already seen that. So this is just the force. And this equals the mass times the second derivative of the position with respect to time. And that's also known as the acceleration. So oh my goodness, we just went through all of this complicated business to find out that F equals MA according to this approach.